And then I wrote about three, four thousand words of the beginning of something. But I did not know where it went next. But I sent it to a uh, loving good friend Terry. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened next. <laughs> Whereupon, after some thought, actually after about a year, actually, <laughs> I put it in the desk drawer. Obviously not yours. Well, um, I, I, your, your immediate reaction was something along the lines of. That's very funny. <laughs> uh, and then I came back saying, I don't know how. I, but you know but what I don't know what happens next. <laughs> and I will either buy it off you, or we will, um, I'll well, buy the idea off you, or we'll like it together. How about that? <coughs> and I, because I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> said, let's let's do it together because I thought I I've never written a novel before and you it was it was like being offered the chance to to be a, become a sort of journeyman apprentice to a Chippendale chairman. <laughs> <laughs> you have to remember quite truthfully in those days I wasn't exactly Terry Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> neither was he Neil. Uh, neither was he Neil Gaiman. Uh, we were doing pretty well in our, in our, in, in our particular corners of the universe. We, we, were, we were friends who met. We've done that thing where I, although I didn't know at the time, was Terry's first interview. He'd interviewed many people. Yeah. But I was the first person to interview him. But we went off and we had this wonderful Chinese restaurant lunch. And you left your hat behind. And I left my hat behind. <laughs> I had a hat back in those days. It was a great. <laughs> this was things have changed over the years. But I, I was convinced that authors should wear hats. It seemed the right thing, and especially journalists, because I'd seen lots of nice movies set in the 30s and 40s in America. And they all wore hats, so I got a proper journalisty grey fedora, and I was 25 and looked. An idiot in my brain. <laughs> and, and I would take it with me everywhere and I would leave it in restaurants. <laughs> and my entire life seemed to consist of turning up at 11 o'clock in the morning, which I learned is when restaurants actually open. The first people would turn up there, knocking on the door saying, Can I have my hat back? <laughs> and after about eight months of this, I gave up one day and just left the hat in a restaurant and never. That was my last so, attempt. If you look around in dusty corners in London restaurants, you might never know what you might be doing. <laughs> Somewhere there will be a Neil hat. And if you wear it, you will write like me or Terry. <laughs>